Okay, um, hello everyone and welcome to the Shootout Podcast. I'm your host Ross Baxter and today is episode 39 of the series and today we've got an amazing guest for you. We've got a character artist, we've got Magdalena Dadella on the show. Um, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming on, this is going to be so awesome. I'm really excited for this. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Anytime. Um, if, um, if you're new to the podcast, by the way, everyone is tu- tuning in. The podcast is a weekly series where I bring on guests from the game and film industries, uh, from all backgrounds, doesn't matter, um, and it's designed to support you guys, the students. Um, we've just reached over 4,000 listeners, so I really do thank everyone who's been tuning in. Wow. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting up there, we're, we're growing. <laughs> um, but if you're, if you're new to the podcast, the podcast is, like I said, it's a weekly series and it's live um, uh, on 9 to 10 platforms. Um, so we're on Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and last but not least, we've got Stitcher. Um, if you're tuning in on YouTube, uh, don't forget to subscribe. It'll be much appreciated. Uh, we're closing in on 2,000 subscribers, so that's super cool. Um, but obviously, like the main thing is Magdalena. So all of you who are tuning in and listening, make sure to go give her a follow and uh, check out her social media, which will be highlighted on the screen um, right now. Uh, what, well, once I edit, you'll see it. You'll, you'll see it all on the screen. <laughs> But um, thank you so much once again for coming on. Um, this will be great. Sure. Sure. So, Let's do this. As always, uh, just like the obvious sort of thing. So just uh, tell us a wee bit about yourself, who you are and uh, what you do exactly. Uh, I'm a character artist, uh, currently working as a character modeler, creature modeler at Framestore. And before that, uh, I worked at Eidos, uh, Ubisoft for many years, Guerrilla Games uh, on some games as well as ILM on film. And frame store before as well. Awesome. In regards to like um, obviously like the podcast, I was like based around student education and stuff. So like like obviously you start yeah, you studied. Um, let me see. So a diploma in animation and VFX. Yes, I studied at VFX for one year, so that's a more vocational school. It's not a university. Okay. And before that, I did my uh, master's degree in English literature in Poland, and uh, I was doing a. A PhD on literature when I decided that I don't want to be in academia and changed my mind basically. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Because like, um, like obviously when it comes to like art, we all have like our different paths and stuff, and yeah. um, like everyone changes all the time. And um, like that's the main part, main part of the podcast is like the different stories, like your journey, and um, like obviously like speaking of like the education side of things, so. Everyone who's tuning in, I always base things around the same sort of four main questions. Um, obviously, I know you said that you, obviously you, you, you only studied that for the one year. But um, yes. when it comes to like education, I like to base things obviously around like like what would you wish you like learn, etc. So if you did have to kind of like say if you were at university or you were studying uh, for character, is there anything you think uh, you wish you could have learned or what, like what do you would like to see being taught basically? Definitely basic drawing. Mm-hmm. and uh, anatomy skills okay so i would like the basics of how to draw how to paint and uh, maybe basic sculpting as well in clay mm-hmm. oh that would be awesome no basically that's a great one like yeah i like that's that's the like i'm, I'm really glad um you said that because like there's this kind of um i assume you've heard the same sort of thing but there's this kind of like trends i think it's been going for like the last I don't know, maybe five years, but it's like there's always kind of this um, impression that traditional doesn't matter anymore. Oh, it does. And I think it makes you see things differently. Yeah. Like I learned sculpting on my own and I took several courses okay. in sculpting throughout the years. And it definitely makes you perceive depth differently. Mm-hmm. And also the importance of detail over the forms, like larger forms you realize that the detail doesn't really matter much. Yeah. Uh, because with real sculpture, you have to s- be able to see what you're looking, know what you're looking at from a distance, from like the end of the room. Yeah. You have to be able to see this is the face. So what makes it work? Like the eyes are deeper than you think. And very often when you look at, for example, uh, sculpts that are made in ZBrush and printed, they mm-hmm. look very flat. Like there is no depth to them. Whereas if you've tried sculpture, you think differently. It makes you appreciate how much depth there actually is in the lips, lip corners and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which you never don't notice if you just do ZBrush. So do you, th- do you think, 
that's become like a noticeable like common trend as in like like when it comes to like students do you think there's a lot of uh, noticeable mistakes that they're making uh, because of that maybe lack of observation through traditional media yeah i definitely think so yes especially for characters when you look at this, the common things that people do yeah uh yeah it's it's one of the things that it takes longer to learn if you don't have the basic basic uh, art knowledge yeah fundamentals um like obviously like when it comes to like uh obviously like student education and stuff like there's like for for example um i actually went through so i'm actually an environment artist um yeah. and um but in my final year of university i went through um this sort of kind of phase between characters and environment so i actually decided to do characters for the whole year and oh, okay. um so i i, I love characters so <laughs> this <laughs> this will be uh, nice and easy so um uh, like when it came to like the my time when i was in characters um obviously like my main focus because i was so new to it and i had so much little time to maybe like get to the level that i had to within the year to get the grade um yeah. my pure focus was purely anatomy and um as cliche as it sounds like so many people overlook this um like the small things and yes. um it's just it gets so important like obviously alongside traditional stuff is there anything you think when it comes to your education um like maybe not just art related but like i don't know like any skills that you think would also be benefiting like does anything else come to mind uh not art related or, or yes both. i think i think one of the things that helped me being from a completely different field which is literature etc where you have to look through libraries of information quickly like in old books like real books and not just digital information mm -hmm. is the the way to find information i find that over the years having worked with many people a lot of people are unable to find information quickly they don't know how to look for information so i think that's something that people should also pay attention to i mean it sounds simple you just type something to google but very often i see people don't know how to actually specify their searches yeah and i, I think that different field if you if you you're faced with a huge library of books and you need to find one small thing. You mm -hmm. start learn, learning how to th narrow things down. Definitely. Like, that, like that's that, that's a crazy thing. Like, I'm glad you mentioned that. Like that's literally the first thing that's ever been mentioned. So like when it comes to like uh, I guess like research and stuff, it's like it's exactly what you're saying. It's like uh, I, like I don't know. It's like like I'll even admit like I kind of um, like do you know when you kind of like stick with your comfort zone, and like you obviously you generate certain habits and stuff, or like your go-to sort of thing or your go-to searches. Um, like, yeah. Like, sure. Like for me, like my bad habit, um, like bringing up like the point that we discussed earlier is, um, so I tend to go to art station too much, mm. and um, it's the same thing when it comes to like, um, going back to like you're saying like the books and stuff, like going back to like those traditional media, and actually understanding what to look for, and um, I think obviously when it comes to student education, it'd be great if people started, um, I don't know, like but just covering like your point there, like actually teaching people like what to be looking for and like how yes. to look for it yeah i think so i think it's important like when it comes to like um obviously like one of the main ones I like to ask is like getting ready for the industry do you think there's any common th um maybe uh things that maybe universities should be doing to get people more prepared i think understanding what the companies actually require of you so mm -hmm. very often i find that schools concentrate on making really nice demo reels to represent the school, so as an advertising for the school, but not as a way to find a job for the student. Yeah. So they want like those, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, like bigger uh, projects with many people working on them, and uh, like films that you know you don't really contribute that much to it, and then mm -hmm. you don't have much to show for it. So if, if you know that you want to work on characters that maybe like concentrate on making a character that a certain video game company would like to see yeah. and just do that. But I understand that schools, they'll won't make you have a good grade if you don't do what they say. <laughs> so. that, that, that's, that's the scary thing because it's like, I'm glad you mentioned that. So um, when I did, um, so obviously when I was going through this phase in my fourth year and I was um, like... So I was like, right, what's the smartest decision for me to do to um, improve my character ability? And yeah. my thought my thought process was literally to like, 
like I'm not. Uh, it'd be great to hear what you think about this. But so I was like to my lecturer, can I uh, just make one character and make it really good? And yeah. um, the response I got was, um, oh, one character is not enough for the submission. And uh, I was like, because I was always purely thinking about getting to the right standard. And yes. uh, instead of just like firing out tons of artwork, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. Well, the thing is, like, you want to practice as much as you can, right? Mm -hmm. But also, if you're making one character and you're trying to make it really good, then you have to learn all the techniques that will make it good. Yeah. So at the same time, you're. I think it's better to have one really good character than ten really bad ones. Mm -hmm. It just makes more sense to me. Definitely. Um, awesome. So, like, uh, obviously, like, there's like so many things when it comes to like, uh, like character art that is like. I guess essential and stuff like when it comes to the portfolio like you've got your, your software standards and stuff but has there been anything different that maybe you realize that you weren't taught through your studies that is actually like a trend now? Ah, a trend now. Yeah. Well maybe the cloth well nowadays because we use Marvelous Designer so much Yeah. Uh, in, in those days you didn't think about clothing in a way that it's actually sewn and made mm -hmm. whereas with uh, with marvelous designer you actually have to think about w how clothing is made yep. from the flat to the to the clothing on the character so that's a bit different and you wouldn't think that having like knowing how to sew clothes would be useful like, like that's, the, that's the crazy thing because like obviously Mar marvelous designer is uh, isn't like like so I, I I've not I've never used it but um, like one of my uh, good friends uses it. Isn't it like some sort of like UV layout thing? Yeah. Well, basically, it's basically what the tailor would do. You you cut the cloth into pieces right. and then you sew them together. So you have to know what the how the patterns behave on the body, right? So mm -hmm. like uh, how to make the sleeves fit and how to make the crotch look like good, yeah. which is the hardest things when you're sewing real clothes to get right. No. Yeah, it's it's an, it's a science of in its own right. I mean, there is people who spend years learning how to sew clothes, and we have to learn it quite fast for characters. Like speaking speaking of clothes, like this, so I was actually listening to um, uh, so like Flip Normals, uh, the Flip Normals channel, and yeah. um, so they were discussing about uh, like obviously like Marvelous Designer is so quick, like once you learn it, like supposedly yeah. it's like it's not it's actually like quite a very uh, easy software to learn or it's like obviously there's like the like what we just discussed there, there's like the whole sort of idea of uh, understanding how things are made but in, in regards to like how much easier it is to make it rather than sculpting in ZBrush mm. yeah well the thing is it's very easy to learn but it's very hard to actually make something look good right okay in it. so very often the clothing that people make in Marvel's designer looks and that's a problem I had for a long time actually it looks too thin it looks flimsy it yeah. doesn't look right it doesn't have the weight of real clothing even if you apply like uh, modifiers to make it a, a wool or something it still looks bad mm -hmm. and you have to understand that real clothing is several layers of fabric it's not just one fabric it's fabric on top of fabric and if you have a lining that fabric on top will behave differently right it mm -hmm. will hang differently so you have to think that way. So it's again back to how actually clothes are made to make it look like real clothes and not just the uh, simulated thin tissue that a lot of the clothing made in Marvel's designer looks like. Looks like that, yeah. sticks, that sticks to the body in, in weird ways. So yeah, definitely it's easy to learn, but then to make things look good is another matter. It's a whole other uh, ball game, completely different. Yeah, exactly. Like that, That's a crazy thing because when it comes to... Um, like the whole character idea is like so to me personally I'm one of those people that uh, like so I love ZBrush so ZBrush is like my favorite software and uh, <laughs> we could talk about ZBrush forever <laughs> um, but it's like I like I would always I, I would always be one of those people that just want to make everything in ZBrush so yeah. would you say to like the students who are listening in now would you be like um, it's better to maybe learn the ZBrush sculpting for clothes in ZBrush rather than going to Marvelous first Oh yeah, definitely. I definitely think that you should still be able to sculpt clothes because even with some, like the last project I worked on, which was uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, okay. the art director actually hated the look of Marvel's designer right. on Lara Croft's main outfit. 
he just didn't like the way the wrinkles formed and no matter how many times we did it he was like no i don't like this i don't like this i want the wrinkles to be exactly like the concept in those places so the only way is to basically sculpt it by yeah. hand so you still have to know how to do it because like i i don't know like about um like card art in general it's just that so the reason why i was bringing up like obviously um there's a lot of cliche questions that i like to ask I don't know. I think they're the most important because, like, they add the most value because, like, everyone always like asks like the same like same sort of thing, like, uh, yeah. like software. Like, I know your pipeline is so you use. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure so it's ZBrush, Substance, and then Marmoset. Yeah, for personal projects, definitely. Right. Uh, at work, I also use Maya a lot. Is there any sort of um, I guess like when it comes to like um, just like your workflow, is there anything um? Like, helped you um, along the way get um, a lot better, or is there like, or have you just always like to keep it kind of like simple, like just like the ZBrush, the Substance Paint, or Marmoset, or you always just done the same sort of thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. ZBrush is the main, probably one. If I'm creating something from scratch, something mm -hmm. new, and well, in film it's different because sometimes you have to reuse like base meshes all the time, and it's more Maya based. There's okay. more Maya rather than zebra sculpting but depends what you're doing oh you, you just made, made me uh, remember a good question so like uh, this was actually asked by uh, one of my viewers so um, every time i do the podcast um like i've just re recently started it but it's like i like to like ask uh, the viewers like what kind of questions uh, w like basically mm. they want me to ask you and uh, one of the questions was actually like uh, the difference between games and film like is there anything like you're like you've noticed is like a big difference in regards to the card art uh, workflow yeah the big difference is in the games you s you model the character and you texture the character right in films you usually don't get to texture the character you have a texture artist who does that mm -hmm. so you, what you do is you model the character and you v it and then pass it on to the texturing and the rigging and in film you also do blend shapes very often so like facial expressions mm -hmm. and in games Depends on the project, like a lot of projects don't use face shapes, so they use just rigs with bones that move the, the face. But uh, on Tomb Raider we did use blend shapes, so that is hap starting to happen. It's obviously, I think it's heavier, so it takes more memory, but yeah, it, it is becoming similar in that respect. Yeah. And also in games, depending on the studio, uh, you used to have more ownership, so you would have like the whole character to yourself, and you would you would work on the whole character. Nowadays, this is changing as well because of time constraints and outsourcing. So a lot of the time, for example, you'll just get the head, and you work on the head, or you just work on the body, yep. and someone else will do the head, and someone else will do the hair. Very often, the hair is outsourced because it's a tedious, boring job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I see what yeah, and it takes a long time, so it's better if somebody already works on it while you're doing something else. Like, like that's the crazy thing. So, like, like this is the, so this is the thing. Like, I have always um, so like just speaking of like workflow and just like portfolio, just in general, and like art. So, like, like your art, by the way, is just amazing. Like, it's insane. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So everyone, you guys, everyone who is listening, you guys have to go check her work out. It's it's incredible. Um, like, so you do a lot of um, like it's. it's so you do like a lot of sort of um, study pieces, um, yes. or, or that's what you kind of like call them on your portfolio for art station. Um, so you do like quite a lot of um, like bus in a way, like so like or like I guess like face sculpts as well, like or like yeah, from just the because, body up. Yeah, because that basically is fun for me. Right. I enjoy it. <laughs> no, no, you've got to do what you enjoy. Cause I and Dave, um, especially when it comes to portfolio pieces, and. Um, like I understand, there's like obviously like this sort of um, demand to, I guess, know the pipeline and stuff for like whether it's game ready or film ready, but when it comes to portfolio, you kind of you just have to always do your own thing. Yeah, yeah, and I think it shows if you like doing something because it always comes out better. Yeah. If you're not enjoying it, it you can see it, you can tell. Like there, you can tell if somebody did something just to, because they think there is something that the our directors will want to see or the game companies will want to see mm -hmm. but they don't give a damn about doing some, something like that you know like uh, there was a whole trend of those uh, mechanical robot like characters mm -hmm. 
and you can tell from the car the artists who made them the ones that enjoyed actually doing those things and the ones that just thought that this is the thing to do now and yeah they had no character at all yeah so i think it's better to do what you love doing no because like that's, that's that's the thing so um um so when i when i look at your artwork so um i actually made a tweet out the other day and um like you can so you can tell like your your, your characters have so much life and like sort of um I d like you, so like you light it perfectly and there's like so much like character and like sort of story behind um like your pieces and i think it's like like it's like you said that there's so many artists who make like the the generic sort of um piece or like art piece for a job um just because they think it's going to guarantee them a job whereas yeah exactly like you show you so much um show so much life and stuff in your pieces and um like when it comes to like I guess like the story aspect, so like like what are you normally thinking about when it comes to making an art piece? Is it purely just uh, working on the go, or, or are you thinking of like lots of different things? Uh, I tend to think too much. Okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, so yeah, well, I don't do like a whole story thing about a character. Mm -hmm. Like right, like I know that some artists like to do that, like write a story where the character is from, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I don't do that. I, I'm more about the feelings. Like, I want the character to, to look like they're feeling something or thinking something. Okay. That's the most important thing for me. So would you say... Yeah. It's... Oh, sorry to cut you off. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. I, I was just going to say, so like, do you think you said earlier about like the blend shapes and stuff? So would you say if somebody was making maybe working on a portfolio piece, focusing maybe like, or highlighting like the feelings and expressions of like variation would be good? Oh, that would be awesome, yeah. Because like... Like, I, I know obviously um like every time I bring on the I guess on the podcast like I know obviously that like, they're limited to what they can say and so forth but it's like does anything like stand out to you personally um in a portfolio is like is there anything that you'd be like wow that just looks awesome I like that's um definitely like maybe a job ready um candidate oh yeah uh I definitely would say expressions okay because you, you don't see that a lot and also, I love silhouettes personally, so I love when an artist really thinks about the silhouette of the whole character, like how things move, like how lines move into each other in the pose, for example, if they're posing the character. Uh, I can understand why people don't pose the characters, it's a pain. Or just Especially like, have the flat one. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to rig it, uh, the whole technical part of it is annoying. With ZBrush, you can pose it. But it also takes a long time, especially if you worked on the whole cloth and everything in the default pose, and then you just have to basically break it and resculpt it to, yeah. to pose it. So I can understand why people don't like doing it. But if someone does go that extra mile, then yeah, it stands out from the crowd definitely. So do you know when you're sculpting? Are you um, so do you always keep in symmetry, or do you change it up literally straight off the bat? Uh, I usually start like when I'm. Let's say for a face, I'll usually start with symmetry and keep my eyes symmetrical as long as I can. Mm -hmm. And I like to break it like halfway through. Awesome. So de definitely break symmetry on the faces always because faces are never symmetrical. Even when you look in the mirror, you can see it. Yeah, it's all, there's always so, that slight difference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One, one more droopy eyelid and stuff like that. The nose slightly crooked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, even like uh, I have two life casts at home from uh, two actors. One is like an older lady and one is Tom Cruise. Right. And they say Tom Cruise's face is so perfect. It's so, <laughs> not, so not symmetrical. It's totally off. It's very wonky looking. Mm -hmm. So even the people that they say is, are perfect are not perfect. Like, so definitely look at life casts. I think life casts are a great thing, and scans, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. As reference. I I, I just wonder, is there any sort of um, like main things that you do like habits wise that like when you're creating a piece and stuff like obviously um like I remember um like obviously you've got like the cast and stuff so um everyone who's tuning in by the way so um, Magdalene did a a talk with um, algorithmic um so substance the other day um it's it's a, it's a really great um video um. Uh, she talks about her process and stuff so if you guys want to go check that out by the way so she really goes into depth about her workflow with skin etc and stuff and uh 
like oh, by the way that, that that was insane like i i so um i'm amazed by what you did because like when it comes to like skin like like it's a, it's a whole other beast to me personally like if i was to go do like um like character art again i wouldn't know where to start yeah because there's like so much going on like especially like the color aspects like when you were talking about um like do you know where the, like you were saying about the veins yeah like like i like i've like i've never heard of that at all like until i learned oh, it from the depth that. of the veins and yeah stuff. yeah that's something actually i learned from uh steve wang who's right. like uh a huge name in the special effects industry. He mm-hmm. did the Predator, the original Predator yeah. uh, model. So yeah, he he mentioned it in one of his like I watched a tutorial by him on painting the the characters like uh, with the airbrush and stuff, like uh, real life painting. Right. And it's something he mentioned about the veins and the depth of the veins and breaking it up and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that also blew my mind back then when I watched it a few years ago. I was like, oh my yeah. god, I never thought of that. It, like, it, obvious. Yeah. It's obvious. It, it's always it's always the small things that you're just like, you, you start geeking out, out about. Because, like, when I saw you, um, like, I don't know uh, what you did, but it's, do you know when you were var- uh, varying, like, the, the, the normal map of, like, the skin texture mm. um, uh, in, in, the, in the video? I was like, what, like, what is this witchcraft? <laughs> because <laughs> i don't have a clue how you did it there's like so much different things going on i was like wait this this is super cool yeah yeah there's a lot to texturing a face that yeah one picks up over the years yeah like from someone here from someone here like another thing i remember was uh i don't remember who it was actually it was also a special effects artist and he talked about uh he called it the power of the x right so basically, when you're sculpting wrinkles, in he sculpts in clay, obviously, but it's the same as in ZBrush. It's basically a lot of X's, X's. just overlapping each right. other. So you just do X, X, X all the time and smooth it out and then add another layer of X's, like the letter. Yeah. And that's the power of the X. You just basically, when you look at the skin, that's all it is. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, why <laughs> didn't I think of this? so obvious yeah but that, that's the crazy thing it's, it's always it's always is the small things that you tend to overlook and uh, yeah like like that's why like everyone always says like the well I, obviously i know this isn't a small thing but do you know when everyone talks about like how important anatomy is like uh, yes. like everyone always kind of uh like for example um one of my favorite artists is uh glaco and mm. um, yeah he's amazing he's he's insane and um his one of my favorite pieces is his uh necromancer character Mm. Um, and um, it's like obviously like, so when he's doing a talk and stuff he always says like obviously like anatomy is key and stuff but um, I always get distracted by like the assets and stuff but it's the thing that the thing that makes the assets look good is the anatomy and yes. it's like everyone always still kind of overlooks it like obviously like um, students I guess uh, like I don't know like it'd be great if um, there was more teaching on the side of anatomy because like when I was in uh, university, like we had like um, like what we were discussing earlier, like life drawing, but yeah. it wasn't really um, like in depth. Like it'd be great. Like speaking of what you said about earlier, like if I had a class about clay sculpting, oh my gosh, that'd be so awesome! Like actual traditional clay. Like I just, I just, I just think there was more to it because there's just not enough, I guess. Like yeah, the thing, yeah. the thing with uh, with life drawing, life drawing is awesome. I love it. Yeah. But, but usually it's just you drawing and looking at the model, but nobody actually explains to you what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. So it would be nice to have a class where they actually do explain to you what you're looking at. And then you have another class where you just go and draw yep. after the knowledge, right? So that's the thing. Like, uh, life drawing is great after you acquired some basic knowledge. Then you know how to interpret what you what's in front of you. Mm-hmm. So, like, do you know when it when it comes to the character? Like, obviously, like they always talk about like muscles and stuff. Like, do you do you like do a lot of studies yourself when it comes to like understanding like anatomy? Obviously, like you can do like a lot of like um, practice and stuff through like actual like physical practice. So actually drawing and sculpting and stuff. But do you actually yeah. research into, it or is it not actually required to know much about? Like the theory of like the names and stuff. 
Oh, the names are not that important, but yeah, I do. I did a lot of courses on anatomy over the years, and I still keep going back to it. And recently, I've been studying again the forearms and each muscle and all that stuff. Yeah. Just because it basically escapes you, you keep forgetting it. It's it's like forever. It's one of those things that you can study forever and still not learn everything. Yeah. Uh, la- last year, actually, I went for uh, anatomy tools. I don't know if they you know about Ooh, them. I've I've not heard of that. No. The anatomy tools dot com. They make those large uh, figures, anatomy figures mm-hmm. uh, that a lot of artists use. They're like a uh, one meter high uh, full body figures wow right okay uh, yeah i love i love them they're amazing but they also have uh, courses in uh, las vegas which is like anatomy courses where you basically look at the real model and sculpt them in real clay no that's no, that's awesome that's what we should be getting like oh my gosh if we could get that everywhere that'd be great yeah andrew course who's the head of the anatomy tools he's absolutely amazing and he has so much knowledge about anatomy and i did the course in anatomy in motion where we got to sculpt uh one of the like cirque du soleil artists mm-hmm. hanging upside down in a split pose wow right, okay <laughs> which was super difficult but also the way he taught it was basically he taught us observation first and sculpting later so when you're looking at the model you you basically uh, showing courtesy to the model, you're using them by observing first, and then once the model takes the rest pose, then you can sculpt what you observed, rather than being concentrated on your stuff and actually not looking at the model when they're there. So, and he was explaining like what was happening on the model's body when the model was taking, like doing the pose. Mm-hmm. So what the hips were actually doing, what the chest was doing, and all the basic anatomy in actually uh, applied anatomy, basically. Yeah. So yeah. Th- that's pretty amazing. So it's like basically to understand. So, so the main focus is so obviously like there's all these awesome different poses and stuff. But it's, yeah. to, it's, it's to understand, so you're saying it's like to understand what's actually happening, so what's going on. Basically. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, exactly. Right. Cause like, so it, I oh, think oh, that oh. would be awesome to have, like, even in a simple standing pose, to have somebody first explain what happens in a pose, like what the actual anatomy is doing, and then you can go on and draw it. Yeah, that would be awesome in education, but that rarely happens. Because, like, well, that's the thing. So, like, when it comes to, like... Um, like obviously, like there's a like I know that like, there's still like um like there is good courses out there, and like the like for example um like the Norman etc. Um, yeah, Scott I, Eaton. Oh, he's got the course. He's insane. He, he's he's amazing. <laughs> um, did I'm trying to think who's the, who who's the I don't remember the guy's name, but there was like a guy who did a sculpt of Scott Eaton. Did you did you ever see that? Oh, Ian Spriggs. What what's his name? Ian Spriggs. Right. Okay. Uh, like like, like, the, like a, a portrait. You mean with yeah. a skull? Yeah. Yeah. I worked with Ian before. Yes. Gee whiz! Like that. Like that was crazy as well. <laughs> like, it's really good. Well, that's like that's a good topic as well to uh, to uh, to bring up because obviously speaking about the idea of um, I know we're kind of going off tangent in regards to like, uh, like I was talking <laughs> yeah. about education but uh, I always like to go with the flow because I think it's the, uh, it's always the best thing but um, when it comes to like the. The, um, so I'm not sure if it's if it's his website. So Scott has um, like he he does like photog- f- photography, mm, and of, yeah, is it like ba- like I'm not sure is it ballet? Like he has like yeah, it's something uh, like that. it's the anatomy in motion uh, oh. website. Like, oh wait, is that uh, part bo- of the bodies, same thing? Bodies, bodies in motion, bodies in motion. Oh sorry. right. No, no, bodies in motion is Scott's thing, okay. which is like a website where he has a lot of photographs and as well as scans so yep. you can rotate around them in different poses it's really great for a study it's amazing because like when it comes to like the whole sort of like um i guess like obviously we talk about trends and stuff so when it comes to like when i think about the the typical um student i always think um well based on my own experience when i was at university like everyone was always making um something either very stylized or very cliche maybe like a soldier or something yeah and i like i don't know it's like if you were to maybe look for a portfolio, like speaking back on the topic of portfolio, um, like 
if you were to see like maybe just like I know for yourself like on your own portfolio so you have the um, the amazing study piece of um like the female and then you've got your time lapse mm. and um like do you think um recruiters like seeing that is more valuable than like maybe a full character just because you're highlighting that you've got the foundations nailed I think it helps right uh, but it's also great to see something textured. Like I know that a lot of times people want to see a fully textured model for games, at least. Yep. I think for film it would be way more helpful to just have that sculpt mm -hmm. because you're not going to be texturing it anyway in production, unless you're like applying to a small film company. The some I know some companies where you do texture as well, but most of them you don't. Like all the big ones, you don't. So, so like, is there like um? So will you say, like, like I understand like, like this is like a common question as well. So like this is one I get asked a lot to ask the guests is like, uh, like how many portfolio pieces is like enough? But like t to me, what I realize, so um, like obviously I, I know it depends. So it is a, it is a big question, but it's like, uh, um, so um, I had an interview f um, for a company a few months back and mm. um, like they said to me that the, like they uh, only considered me because of my one piece. Mm. And uh, yeah. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. I would say one to three, like really good ones, is better than ten mm -hmm. mediocre ones. Because like, like that's the thing. Because like, when it comes to art station, there's so many people that have this habit of like, oh, I want to show everything, or like just keep yeah, spamming. basically keeping it like a blog, right? Yeah. So they keep updating with stuff that's unfinished all the time. Yeah. So I don't. I'm not. Like, I think you can use your Instagram for that. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're using ArtStation to get a job, then I would say, yeah, better do like two, three really well-finished pieces. Even one really amazing, like mind-blowingly good. Mm -hmm. as, as good as you can at a time, right? Because obviously with time you get better. No, that's great. Uh, th thank you so much for answering that because like, uh, I've been getting so many um, questions for the character side of things um, on the podcast. Like, everyone's like, how many pieces do I need? I'm like, I, I don't know the answer. <laughs> uh, this is like, <laughs> well, I know a couple of people who got hired of, of one of two pieces that they just concentrated for a while on making something really good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, one, two pieces and it worked. So like th does it um so like this is this is actually something that I was always wondering. So do you like for example on um, Art Station it says like when you posted it does um mm. anyone um uh, like does the question get raised a lot like how long did it take? Oh. <laughs> uh I don't think it matters how long it took. Awesome. I'm so happy you said that. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> no, really because like obviously at work you just work on that and nothing else. But mm -hmm. if you're just making a personal piece for a portfolio, it can take months, it can take weeks uh, or days. It depends how much time you have, right? Yeah. So everybody knows that you're just working on it in your spare time. Even if you're a student, you you don't have a full day to just do that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, yeah, I don't think. And you you'll get faster with time. I think it's better to concentrate on making something good than being fast and work, worrying about speed yeah. i don't think sp speed is important I, I, i'm glad you said that because like so many people keep um like when i was in uni everyone always panicked about um like the whole idea like obviously like obviously when you go to university you're like oh i want to get a job i want to um be ready and stuff so like they try and force things out and they have like that sort of um i don't know they're, they're, they're stressing about things that are out of their control yes like obviously like you said it takes time to get better and there's there's no like everyone who's listening like you have to just um trust in time like be patient like patience was the best thing i ever learned and uh, definitely it just it, like i know it's hard especially yeah. nowadays when you see artists who have been working in the field for like 20 years mm -hmm. just just spitting things out every day or very often like every two weeks they they have a full character but if you're just starting there's no way you can do that yeah. and do it well it's Im impossible definitely and like like for example like speaking of like just like the whole idea of time like uh so for example every every time well obviously it, it does depend on the course so like your your usual course is like th uh, three to four years um on average mm. um i actually have like an uh, interesting question so like my personal uh well i'll just ask the question just to let you see see what you see um so 
what's your thoughts on master's degrees? <laughs> so I personally think this is, I know this is a bit harsh, but I think they're pointless. Well, I think they're pointless if you don't want to work in the academic field. Right. I think they have, they have a, if you want to work at university, then it's useful. But otherwise, like if that's not your goal, then I don't see a point of doing a master's degree. Yeah. It might help you later on, though, with a visa, if you're trying to work outside your country. Okay, yeah, I know definitely. That the U.S. is very hard to get a job without university degrees, so mm -hmm. I don't know if bachelor's to master's will make much of a difference. I know it helped me when I was trying to get a permanent residence in Canada, mm -hmm. because you got additional points for a master's degree. Like, so yeah. It's just, well, it's just the fact that's like, um, to me, like this, like this is the so obviously like, the main reason is obviously like sh the like student education, like that's the main topic and stuff. And uh, the one thing I've always kind of, um, like, I know this is always a de debatable thing, but I've always kind of struggled with the whole sort of uh, like all the the theory side of things in the sense that like all the written stuff. Yeah. Because I just don't see the value. Like, like obviously I understand that like it's great. Like so, for example, when I was in my fourth year, I did. Um, um, like I master studies of like Mi Michelangelo and so forth, and uh, mm. like I love that stuff. Like I love um, the true old uh, masters, and uh, I completely understand that sort of thing. But like if I had to like um, like say if I was a character artist and I was like like what's going to be the best sort of course for me? It'd be like getting rid of like the whole idea of grades. I know that's like yeah. a big thing, <laughs> but it's like uh, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. But like to me, I just like I just don't get the whole system. Yeah, the thing is like. With art, unless you, I think that the master's degree makes sense in art only if you want to study history of art. Okay. If that's what you're interested in, but not for practical art application. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's of no use at all for you if you have a document. Like, who cares? Yeah, it, but it means nothing. <laughs> if if yeah, if for you you want to be an art historian as well as an artist, then it makes sense. So it depends on what you want to do. So, like, obviously when it comes to, like, uh, like bringing back up the topic of, like, learning resources and stuff, um, is there anything that maybe you recommend for students to learn, whether it's uh, online courses or just websites or stuff? Like, what's helped you over the years? Uh, definitely Scott Ethan's courses. Mm -hmm. I would totally recommend them. Uh, the face one, I had some, yeah, revelations during that one <laughs> when I... When I took it, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Just everything started Just, clicking. <laughs> yeah, things start clicking again. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely recommend his courses. Uh, there's so much now on Gamroad that is very misleading. Like, a lot of the stuff is just speed sculpting or stuff like that, which is of no use at all, I think. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense later on when you just want to see how other artists do it. But it's not really learning you, you don't learn much by mm -hmm. watching somebody else sculpt yeah. i don't think but yeah norman has good stuff still and over the years it, yeah they they were like the main source so, so that's your your two kind of go-to sort of people so scott eating and then and uh, youtube norman. youtube youtube has tons of free stuff that you don't even have to pay for what what, what sort of channels do you normally uh, go to i just search for what I'm interested in so I was just looking at stuff from substance designer I just typed in substance designer and mm -hmm. went through several videos but uh, there's this guy uh, Pavlovich I think he's called oh, right, okay. uh, he's a ZBrush artist yeah yeah and he's doing like really good uh, videos on the basics of ZBrush and all the mechanical sculpting, if someone is interested in that. I think his name is Pavlovich, Mike. Would you would you be okay to... Uh, so, oh, by the way, everyone who's tuning in, um, the I will be sharing all the links um, uh, at the end. So, uh, um, if you're okay with that as well, uh, Madeline, are you okay to like, share any links if that's okay? Sure, yeah. Because, like, uh, like, I understand, like, there's... like there's, I know, obviously, there's a lot, uh, a lot of information that I bring to you guys on the podcast, but... Uh, like, this is the great thing about it is like there's so much different stuff um, out there that you can utilize and uh, like I understand like the, a lot of things um, also cost money and stuff but like um, 
you you mentioned one good point there when it came to like the speed thing. So there there's only one pet peeve I have with um, online courses. Like I think personally, online courses in terms of my mindset are are a lot more beneficial at the moment than university. In yeah. The se- in the sense that, like for example, you you said uh, the Scott Eaton stuff, like learning f- from a master, like way more cheaper. Like for example, we were, we were talking before the podcast about. Uh, like the costs for education in Scotland and what it was like in America, and uh, mm. like student, student debt isn't something you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, simple as that. But the the one pet peeve I've always had is that. Um, do you know when they? I I think it's like well it's exa- exactly the same. But when someone's doing like a like for example, I was um, one of my friends was doing an a environment art course, and the person was um, doing a time lapse of the full process in ZBrush while talking over it, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I, like, I understand for some people like there's some value in that but to me it, there's just uh, it, I don't know it just doesn't it doesn't work as a teaching thing for me yeah well it depends what you want to learn if you just want to learn ZBrush yeah then yeah. You, you're not gonna learn it yeah just by looking at somebody do something very quickly right mm-hmm. because they're not explaining how they did things they're just explaining how what they were thinking more yeah, yeah. so it's yeah it's different it's it's always like the whole idea of like the why like so many people um obviously like 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 for example I've been a culprit of this myself like um do you know, like when you kind of uh, when you're uh, early on to learning something you, you try to copy thing like minute by minute or yeah. like, just so you can actually get things get things to click but yeah I've always realized though that that doesn't like well it it depends obviously like how much time you're putting in but it doesn't like pay dividends over the the long run like it just mm. doesn't um. Like it, it, you're wasting so much time like doing like um the actual work itself is so much better instead of just uh going right he's rotated he's the left clicked over there it just doesn't work no it doesn't i don't think so either at least it doesn't for me either yeah it's like yeah i think it's better to have your own project and you're like okay now i'm stuck at this point mm-hmm. how do i do it and then you just look for ways of doing getting out of the hole basically yeah. Or ask somebody else if you can, on how they would approach it. Because like, like well, that, that, that's the thing. So like, when it comes to like uh, just work workflow in general, I think so many people have to kind of um, focus purely on the idea of pleasure. I, I know it sounds a bit um, cliche, but it's like, the, the, like a lot of people always like ask people like, how do you do things? And and I get that. Like I understand it's important. Like obviously, like asking questions is the best thing you can ever do. And you, you've you've got to ask questions. Like never feel afraid to ask questions. It's the thing I preach every time on the podcast. But you have to, like the only way you get better is through just actually doing the work. Yes. Yeah, like just have to. constantly doing it. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Exactly. So it's the only way to figure you have to solve your own problems. You're still gonna yeah have issues. You're still gonna have like. Uh, moments when you're like oh my god I don't want to do this anymore you just have to go through it in order to learn it's no other way yeah you can't you can't just absorb somebody else's knowledge instantly and so, so like when it comes to like I guess um like I still got quite a few more questions I'm so, I'm so, I'm so sorry I've been bar- bombarding you with so many questions <laughs> no no go ahead uh it's just like you because so ever since I started this sort of a uh, uh, series um, at the start of the week where I get everyone to ask questions I was just like there's so many questions I don't know what to do. <laughs> like I couldn't handle it. There was just too many of them. I was like, now I understand. <laughs> it's just oh, it's crazy. Um, do you, uh, so when it comes to character, art, is there anything that you kind of uh, do differently? Um, I know that this, this is a bit of a random one, but um, so obviously, like everyone kind of does like your generic generic sort of workflow. But is there anything that you've uh, through the years of practice that that maybe is a bit random that you do? I know it's a bit. You can pass, it's okay, but if, if anything does come to mind, just uh, let me know. Not really. Okay. No, I don't. I can't think of anything that's different. A, that's all right, it's not a problem at all. Yeah, I think I'm just like, a, I, I do the same stuff that others do. Because like, I, I think it's just like, there's so many people like, uh, think that like, when you're like artists like yourself, when you're when you're that good, like some people are like, like, where's this magic? Like, what are you doing differently? But it's just, no. it's just practice. Yeah, practice and also it's you, right? So yeah. the way you think is always different than others. You're you, so just think the way you think, mm-hmm. basically, and use that to your advantage. I think. Awesome. Um, so one of the the big questions I like to uh, so this is this is like the debatable question that I ask on the podcast, and uh, 
But the reason why I, I always ask it is just because um, it opens up the floor and it gets, um, like, it's nothing like crazy, but I always like, like, if you had to choose between like online courses or uh, university, would, would you choose one or like, what's your thoughts on the two? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this well, is the big one. <laughs> There is good things about university, I think. It's one of the things is the people. Mm -hmm. So you basically meet people who will later on work in the industry. So you're building a network already, even yep. though you don't think about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest advantage of a university. Definitely. And also just having fun. Like when you're at university, you just have time to explore things. You're not pressured. Whereas if, if you don't go to university and you have to find a job, then it's it's harder unless you really like, you know, you have plenty of time. You can sp you still be in your at your parents' house and you just can watch videos online. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, it's awesome. And if you can call, maybe with the thing is with online, you can also connect with artists that you admire and ask them questions mm -hmm. so you can still network in a way. And if they notice you after a while, you can, you know, be on their ra radar. Yeah, because like, w I, like I always like to ask this, like, I, um, this question because like, I, like I always like, like, there's always like a trend and stuff. I do get um, obviously a lot of the same um, answers and stuff. But the reason why I always ask it is because like, it's just it's one of those questions that everyone kind of, um, I guess, like they always want to know, and um, particularly from like different fields. Like I understand that different fields have or different artists have different perspectives on like whether you're an environment artist whether you're a character artist or a concept artist and um it does depend on like what materials out there online like yeah. um like i know there's a uh, like for example me being an environment artist um i personally think environment art is maybe like well i don't i don't know maybe it is to be it is quite close with concept art but i think there's so many environment artists out there like that's mm. why there's so much resources available for us yeah Whereas, like, for characters, like, I... Uh, I there's still quite a lot. Because I, I, I don't know, because obviously, like, um, I'm I, I'm a rookie in comparison to you. Like, when it comes to character, I, I don't... I, I know nothing, but it's, um, like, I the don't know. The thing is, like, when I was starting myself, like, from my own experience, mm -hmm. uh, because I studied something completely different, and I started when I was quite old, as they say, like I was 20, 24 when I started to get interested in 3D and okay. started learning it at 26. Oh, that's awesome. So I had no idea where to start. That's the problem. So I went, yeah. I wanted a school in order to structure me and direct me in a, in a way, like tell me exactly what the different, what texturing is, like how to UV things. Because otherwise I, I was looking at the internet and there was too much. And you don't you you just get pulled in different directions and you don't know where to go. Yeah. So I think a school is also good in that way. Definitely. It depends on what school you choose. I mean, university is another thing because it's way longer and it will definitely show you things from different, also of different directions. But a school like VFS, for example, which is one year. You don't really learn the artistic part of it, but you get to learn all the technical stuff. Mm hmm. So you get to try some animation, you get to try some uh, texturing, some modeling, some VFX, and make up your mind what you actually like. I'm so, I'm so happy you said that because like, uh, um, like one of the main questions is like is like fundamentals and stuff, and like so many people like when they are getting started, like you said, like they don't know where to start, and uh, it's like so if you had to like say like so I said to you earlier uh, before the podcast so. Uh, the one question I like to ask is like, say you had to like do everything again, right? So say you had to mm. like go back to square one. Is there anything that uh, you'd maybe change to make your um, your journey more smoother? Uh, I think I wouldn't go to a visual effects school, probably 3D school. I would probably okay. go to some, something like a Florence Academy for a year and just to learn the fundamentals of sculpture and drawing right. first. And then go do a 3D course just to learn the basics of 3D, like how mm -hmm. to open the 3D software, which I didn't even know. Like, <laughs> like, all, oh, all small things. I could, I could open 3ds Max and make a sphere. That was like, <laughs> all I, I could do. I was really proud of myself at awesome. that point. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> the big skills. <laughs> we, all, we all have to start yeah, somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Especially if you're from a different field completely, like literature and 3D are two different things. Yeah. 
No, but that's great though, because like, uh, like, so everyone who's tuning in, it's like, um, like, like I said right at the start, it's like everyone's journey's different, and um, you just have to keep working on it and trust in time, and like using Magdalena as an example, like her her artwork is is amazing, and it's just down to um, being patient, trusting in time, working hard, uh, but also working smart, like really thinking about what can you do to give yourself an advantage to get to that next sort of step. And yeah. it's like, like I understand I, ke- I keep saying it, but just don't rush it. You just have to um, do it step at a time. Like I understand that a lot of people have, um, I guess, uh, like they want, it's like like you said earlier, like people want to maybe like, like say for example, like I was doing character, I'd be like, oh, I want to do what you do. But mm-hmm. I shouldn't be thinking that. Like obviously like um, it's a great sort of level to strive for, but I should just be, um, like obviously I can learn from like 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 through your practice and like asking questions and stuff, but it's just through like patience. Yes, and also it's very easy with in the internet. It's very easy to yeah to get in, distracted. Like I want to do this, and then you see something else, and it's like I want to do that, mm-hmm. and, and you never concentrate on one thing at a time. Yeah, you just keep, keep jumping around. So maybe a school will structure it for you. Mm-hmm. Well, you you mentioned a great thing there, so like jumping around. So do you think, uh, like, I'm not sure, like, if it was a time for you, like, did you have like a habit of uh, constantly maybe like being undecisive, so like constantly changing project? Mm, yeah, that's now. So uh, uh, that's <laughs> that's happening now, right? Okay. <laughs> yes. That's what you're yeah, going through at the moment. What I've been doing lately a lot, because I don't know what I want to concentrate on in my personal work. Yeah. So I'm thinking I, I need to do do more of this thing and then I'm like, uh, I kind of want to try this as well. So, yeah. There's so much stuff you want to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still so much stuff to, to learn all the time. So do you like, um, do you think, uh, or do you think that the best things that you, you tend to do is just be like maybe just forcing yourself to do something and just get, get on with it or do you just wait until you find that sort of peace? No, no, I think you have to force yourself. You just have to sit down and start doing things. Yeah. And that's, for, at least for me, that's the best way. Just sit down and start, and then it goes. But if you don't start, yeah, you'll never get anywhere. Awesome. No, but thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, it, it's been so awesome having you. Um, it's a pleasure. I, I'm not sure, uh, before we finish, is there, is, is there anything uh, random, or uh, I like to tend to like open up to the guests, is there anything that uh, you'd like to bring up, uh, anything in general, or is it... Uh, or all good there's, there's no pressure <laughs> no i'm i'm good i just say like, do what you love to do yeah try to figure out what you love to do and just do that awesome and eventually you become really good at it and people will notice what you're doing like th- thank you thank you once again for coming on because uh like once again everyone who's choosing uh tuning in uh make sure to go give her a follow check out her work and uh, like i said so um, all the links will be in the description below uh, so make sure to check them out um, the the next podcast we've actually got a podcast another podcast today so we've got uh, Lincoln News coming on the show um, but uh, once again uh, thanks so much for coming on it's been awesome having you and uh, thank you till next time we will see you guys later bye for now bye bye.